Hi, it's Nick Astor with TriplePundit.com. I'm here at the Wall Street Journal's Economics Conference in Santa Barbara, California. I'm here with Peter Graff. You're the CSO for SAP. Thanks a lot for uh, sitting down with me today. No problem. Thanks for having me, Nick. Good. Now, we're really excited. We're going to have a uh, Twitter chat coming up. Uh, by the time this video airs, it'll be this week. Okay. Uh, on Friday, uh, April 11th, um, with uh, Peter from SAP as well as... Uh, Aaron Kramer from BSR and folks from CDP as well. Nigel, so it's going Nigel to be sort of, topic exactly Nigel from CDP. So it's going to be a big deal. We're going to be right. talking about economic growth and its uh, relationship with sustainability. But before we get into that, you guys have just uh, released your second integrated report. So tell me a little bit about. We, we love the idea of an integrated report. Right. We love the, the 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 fact that it encourages systems thinking. That it logically connects financial performance with environmental performance. I don't need to tell you much about that. Can you tell us about how that process has gone and uh, what kind of results you're seeing from going through all of that? Yeah, so um, the first time we went for an integrated report, it was a big change. Um, and I was very reluctant initially if we really were ready as a company to go and do an integrated report because what I learned is you need integrated thinking before you can start you know, doing this integrated report. But uh, we went for it anyway and I'm very happy we did because in the process, which by the way, it takes much longer than producing two separate reports. In the process, we had a chance to engage with groups within SAP that we had much more trouble engaging before. CFO, head of HR, CEO, in a way where we're not talking about a sustainability strategy that's kind of separate from everything that mm -hmm. we do, but in a way where we're talking about how to make our strategy a more sustainable one. Mm -hmm. And that elevates the whole conversation. In fact, the the integrated report became a catalyst for integrated thinking within SAP. And so I'm very pleased with where we are right now. Mm -hmm. And so what have, what have we seen this year? What, what are, when we open up the report, what are right. we gonna, what are some of the highlights? Uh, so last year uh, we were, we were um, pioneering a view where we connect in the charts, connect the non-financial and the financial performance with each other. And that created a lot of excitement in the market. And we didn't want to change that. But we also took a lot of criticism for not being close enough aligned with the IIRC framework. And we are a pilot company for the IIRC and the Integrated Reporting Initiative. And we went ahead now and really took the whole structure of our report and make it work along the eight elements that uh, the IRRC suggests as the key content areas. We combined um, uh, outlook, risk, and opportunities into one. They used to be two separate ones. But in essence, it's, it's the same kind of structure. Um, we also um, took much more care about articulating the short, the mid, and the long-term value we create with these initiatives. So um, in the past, we, we were much more focused on uh, you know, this year and maybe the five-year plan. But the long-term perspective is now much more in focus, which I like. Um, and in essence, it's just a more integrated story. The overarching story gels much more. We are having a significant shift in the business model to the cloud. And a lot of the things we were announcing from an environmental perspective are really hitting hard because we're taking sustainability to the core of that value creation in the cloud. Mm -hmm. And tell me a little bit about some of the, um, we can talk about the cloud specifically, energy. I understand you've just announced a 100% renewable energy commitment. That's what, right. Tell, tell me about that. Yeah, I mean, um, it's interesting. If you take SAP's complete carbon footprint, everything upstream, everything downstream, um, you know, let's make it easier, around 90% is product in use. Mm -hmm. So our customers... Servers burning energy. Exactly. Basically. Our customers taking our software in-house, using it in their, in their data centers to run SAP. Now, with the cloud revolution, um, SAP has set out the strategy to become the cloud company based on HANA, which is a, a great mm -hmm. new technology to build systems. And... Um, and when you run a system in the cloud, SAP's data center is running the software mm -hmm. and we're offering it over the internet. So what mm -hmm. used to be a scope three emission becomes a scope two emission. Mm -hmm. Now that changes everything because now the environmental aspect of running our business becomes much greater, mm -hmm. which is why this is, a this is a significant announcement. So going 100% renewables for us means to continue to produce our own renewable energy. That's one part. The second is to um, buy renewable energy from the utilities or to buy renewable energy credits where we can't do that. There are some regions in the world where it's a little bit harder to come by. 
And third, um, we have invested in a financial tool called the Livelihoods Fund, where you make an investment and in return you get carbon credits. Because the investment is used for reforestation of yes. mangrove forests and other uh, sensitive eco environments. And we have actually, together with these other companies, planted more than 100 million trees. And we can now take the carbon credits, the offsets, if you will, and apply them against things like uh, our own travel emissions uh, caused by airplanes, for example. And is that another form of, a, of an REC? basically, or is it a little different? It's, a, it's, a, it's an offset, uh, mm -hmm. so you can really use this to offset any, uh, you know, any ton of carbon. The RECs are used to offset electricity the generation emissions. Itself. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. Got it, got it. Now, you guys have also, I want to take a little bit onto the, the social side mm -hmm. of sustainability. Right. And you guys have a great reputation for uh, education, for uh, funding, not just technical education, but now a little bit more uh, business education right. as well. Right. Can you tell us a little bit about where that's sure. going? Sure. Um, first of all, when you do run social programs as part of your sustainability strategy, it is so important to craft them in a way that they not only benefit society, but they also benefit the company mm -hmm. itself. So we've mm -hmm. done a lot of educational programs, okay. uh, you know, math, science, um, physics, and stuff like that, um, in you know, in areas like uh, like India. Uh, other, you know, other areas where you have growing economies where there's a, a real divide in, in access to education and things like that. So that's important to us, but it is also important to SAP in the long run because we thrive on a society that is, you know, entrepreneurially active and is educated. So we have a long, a long history around this. However, um, we have uh, since uh, uh, about a year or so pioneered. MOOCs, uh, massive open online courses, and uh, we used to run them only on technology. So, you know, HANA, which is in memory database, or mobile development, or analytics. Now, for the first time, we do a business MOOC uh, starting in, in this month on April 29. And it's a MOOC that talks about sustainability and business innovation. It's got 34 segments, it's over six weeks. Um, you get a record of achievement if you pass the final exam and the great tests on the way. Um, but most importantly, we are sharing the experience we've collected and gathered over the last five years in becoming the leader of, yeah, in, in sustainability for the, for the yeah, software sector. So we engage with lots of companies who are trying to do and to implement more sustainable practices. We've seen many things that worked and many things that didn't work. And we've made lots of mistakes and we did some things right. And this MOOC is all about sharing this mm -hmm. from strategy to the business case and how do you sell it and what processes need to look like and how do you engage the different types of stakeholders? How do you do reporting? What's integrated reporting? And, and, and. It's targeted at uh, students, at uh, professionals, experts alike. This and is it, almost an entire MBA program. Let's take a lot of stuff you just mentioned. Yeah, it's 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 uh, as I said, it's thirty-four segments uh -huh. uh, of video. Each video is between fifteen and twenty and minutes long for, for folks. It's yep. Free, free of charge, and you just go to open.sap.com and uh, you can register there. Excellent. Now, um, last question. I'm, we're really going to be excited about this Twitter chat that's coming that's up. Right. So, folks, uh, take some notes and uh, <laughs> get your get your questions ready. Um, but one of the themes of the of the chat itself is going to be on this idea of growth. That's and, right. You know, is is does growth and our obsession with growth always run contrary to sustainability or not? Mm -hmm. Easy I, question, right? What yeah, do you think? I think that's the holy grail of the whole yeah. conversation. So um, we've had years at SAP where we, where we really managed to decouple growth from negative environmental impact. Mm -hmm. So that has happened in the past. Now. Um, when we are shifting to the cloud, we are having a change in business model that, per default, you know, puts much more, yeah, um, a much more demand on us. But at the same time, it creates growth for the company, mm -hmm. and uh, the company wants to obviously grow um, because we're in a growth industry. Uh, so for us, it was really important to find out how we can balance that going forward. And in in our in our world, it was really taking sustainability to the core of value creation. And that's, I think, where it needs to go. And, and that's true for any industry. If you're a utility, sustainability needs to happen in your power plant. If you're, if you're a retailer, it needs to happen in your value chain, because that's how you create the value. Mm -hmm. and, and when companies are focusing on that, um, then they have a chance to 
to really decouple their growth from their negative environmental impact. It might take a bit of investment in between. I mean, we are paying more money for green electricity in our data center than not green electricity, you know? But it creates a competitive advantage. Uh, for us, it, it forces us to be even more efficient. It, does, it has a lot of positive impact that we believe is by far outweighing the, the additional cost of clean electricity. Good. Well, we're looking forward to talking more about it uh, in the future. And Peter, thanks very much for joining me. Thanks. Thanks.